Good morning. It's day seven, I think. And uh, we just left camp about an hour ago and climbed. It's gonna be a little hard to tell how steep it is, but camp is down there about right here where my finger is, about 800 to 1,000 feet. And here's some other guys coming up right now. We gotta keep going all the way up and around to way up there. But uh, this was the climb that kicked our ass yesterday and took us like eight hours just to get up and then an hour and a half to cash and like another hour and a half to get down at least. So this is the one that was brutal getting to 14 camp, but uh, this was the first of the three hills and it wasn't nearly as bad. So feeling a lot better, feeling a lot better about today. And I'm gonna get some water and food. I'll check in later. In case you're wondering, this is what a slow truck looks like for Sufferfest. We just made it to the top of that hill. It took us about an hour. All right, break number two. Feeling so much better than two days ago when we did this same run. Still hard, but completely reasonable. We still have this one hill ahead. And then around this corner is Windy Corner, so up the hill, and then Windy Corner, and that's where our cache is. But we've conquered two of the three hills. And this is where we should have cached the other day, but we were stupid and went up, which ended up killing us. So, I think we're gonna make it to 14 today. Check in later. Now time for some snacks and water. But we just retrieved our cash at 13.5. Now for the last part of this day. Get all this shit to 14 camp. We have a lot of it. Each of us now has a sled again and a big pack. So it's only about 700 feet, but probably gonna take us at least an hour and a half if not more so here we go so we're almost at 14 camp but check out this view and that's Forker about 17,000 feet that's Jim so I said this when we got to 11 camp too, but seeing camp after an eight hour day is one of the best feelings we could ever have. There it is, 14 camp. And that's the head wall. Fourteen camp is huge, it's like a little small city. Um, and I think we just lucked out and found a pre-built tent, or not tent, uh, a pre-built like camp spot so we don't have to build the walls like we have at the other spots, which would be great because I'm exhausted. So, let's go find out. Whoa! Tom! Tom, that's a good kitchen, but look! It's 
So it looks like we found ourselves a camp spot. And a kitchen spot. We'll have to do some shoveling of course, but this will save a lot of effort, so. This place is insane. Welcome to Alaska. All right, we're walking over to our campsite. Um, still have to dig things out, make dinner, set the tent up, do a lot, so I probably won't check in anymore tonight. But, in case I didn't point this out. There she is. That's the top of the mountain. So we head up there and then follow the ridge line. Easy peasy. Only another 6,000 feet. And I'm winded just towing my sled on flat ground, so. I'll follow up tomorrow. Peace. Morning. Day eight, I think. Slept pretty well last night, actually. It's way colder up here, though. But now we were informed that we might be sitting here for a while due to some bad weather. So, checking the Ranger Station weather board. So, up here is a Ranger Station. And supposedly they put the weather on this board right up here. Alaska. Okay, we just have to shovel a ton of snow on those flaps. <laughs> and it'll be lots of So that guy attempted to go from 14 camp to the summit yesterday. Um, they got stuck up at Denali Pass and now they're heading down. So they came around and gave us a bunch of food. So I got a bunch of got a bunch of treats. I'm mostly excited for that Babe Ruth bar. That's the way to do it. And that. We're also talking about maybe doing a trial run. Not necessarily a, a nighttime, all night run. But sometime today, maybe I'll fall this time in my tent. Very proud of myself. I made us bagels, bagels and cream cheese. But I crispified them. Put some butter on the pan. Mm, and now I'm making hot water for us. For tea and hot chocolate. 14 camp, day one, success. All right, lunch is done, or breakfast, or whatever the hell we just had and I pulled all my stuff out. I'm not actually cold, I'm putting this on the tent so I can let it dry, make sure all my down stuff is nice and dry. Cause last night was cold, wet, and hectic. Tomorrow though, I think we're gonna try to go up this. Put a cache right here, and then come back, sleep here, and then go back up. Sleep somewhere around here if the weather's good, in like two days. And then, do, 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 hopefully, hopefully make a summit push in the next three to four days. Today though, we rest and just get used to this elevation because 
I get out of breath shoveling like four times, but I feel fine, no headaches, nothing, so that is good. Check out our kitchen, it's pretty dope. So we got all of our food, we got little seating areas and drink holders. I don't know if you can see those. All of our mugs, our fuel, our pots. So this is pretty much what we cook. We just heat up a lot of water, or snow, and uh, that's how we get our water. These are the stoves. And then just some seating. So yeah, I'm gonna continue resting and I'll check in with you guys either later tonight or tomorrow. Morning, day eight, maybe nine now. Losing a little bit of track. Um, so we're heading up the head wall now. Pretty steep. But that guy right up there with the skis on his back just walked past us like we're standing still. Apparently, he's Colin Haley, a professional climber. So makes me feel a little bit better. All right, up, up, and away. So we made it to 16.2, but that last round wasn't good for me. We pushed a little hard, around 15, and uh, altitude caught up with me. Feeling a lot better now, but we're gonna cache. We're gonna cache just right here at 16.2 and go back to 14 camp, because I don't think it's in my best interest to go higher today. But these views are incredible. And unless I'm mistaken, that right there is the top of Denali. We're getting close. Good morning. It's now day 10, I think. Could be 11, but I think it's day 10. Um, we went up to 16 and cached like I said yesterday, um, came back down, got some good sleep, some good food. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm actually going to go check the weather board right now. But it looks like if everything works out, we will be making, so today is Tuesday, and it looks like we'll be making a summit attempt either Thursday or Friday. Here's the weather report. And so tomorrow for here, a high of zero, a low of negative five, cool. Oh, that's today. Tomorrow the same, so. It says chance of showers, chance of showers, 80% tomorrow, but today was 50%, and as you can see, not very crappy out today, so. And then kind of the same for the upper mountain for Camp 5 to the summit. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, looks like it's gonna be a good time to try to push for the summit. And then hopefully we can get a clean exit off the a clean exit off the mountain too or off the glacier because just because it's pretty up here and beautiful doesn't mean it's good down at 7200 at base camp so we also have to make sure we can fly off so if all goes well we'll be we will have summited and made it off the mountain sometime early next week so today we shall rest, and we're gonna go to walk for a little down this way, just over here, to something called end of the world, I think, or top of the world or something, so. Bring you along for that. I'll check in later. Peace. All right, we made it to the edge of the world. 
So, it's a little hard to tell, but right back there is Camp 4. That's that head wall we went up again yesterday. And this is the edge of the world. I'm putting this camera away. Wow, that's a far drop. Don't worry, I'm on, I'm on belay now. All right, so gonna check out for the night. Get in the tent, it's about 9.30, let me see. Yeah, it's like 9.30. And uh, once the sun goes around that corner, which it happens to be windy corner, this place gets so cold. It's, I think, a high of five degrees and like a, a low of negative five for tonight. So pretty, pretty cold. Um, but like I said, my sleeping bag good. But you pretty much can't hang outside. You just have to get, like once the sun goes away, you gotta go into your tent, so. Catch you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Good morning, day 11. We are moving from camp four at 14, 14,000 feet to hopefully camp five or high camp at like 17. So we're heading back up this head wall. And hopefully we'll pick up our cash and uh, settle in there for the night. And then if all goes well, tomorrow we will attempt to go for the summit. And if not tomorrow, definitely Friday. So keep you guys posted. All right, we are on the fixed lines at like 16,000 feet. This is where I started to have some issues the other day, mostly because I went too hard and got kind of in the red zone and felt like crap, but feeling much better today. This is what you were looking at. Don't worry, I'm anchored again. Feeling good. Check in later. Bad news, guys. So it took us 10 hours to get to 17 camp yesterday, and uh, which kind of beat me up a lot. But we got here and it was negative 25 degrees out. So I um, got a little sick, had trouble sleeping, and then I woke up this morning with altitude sickness, which isn't too big of a deal, except for the fact that we're at 17,000 feet with no one to help us out. So all that being said, I have opted to not finish the final part of the climb, which is so close. That right there is the top of Denali, and we are right there. Gonna go down and uh, yeah, maybe maybe another time, but for now, that's what I've decided is the best decision for me. So I'll still walk you guys, show you guys some of the cool stuff going out. That I didn't show you yesterday because we were hauling so much shit up the mountain and uh, going across this like really skinny ridge at 17,000 feet. So I'll show you that on the way down. So 
Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in here real quick and kind of do a better job of explaining exactly what happened on the mountain and why I decided to turn around. Now I know I mentioned that I wasn't feeling great, but that's only part of the story and I kind of think it's beneficial to anyone watching to kind of understand a little bit more about what exactly happened and uh, again why I decided to turn around so close to the summit. But basically to summarize everything, the reason I decided to turn around was because I, I guess I mentally broke, I gave up, I uh, no longer wanted to be on that trip and uh, it kind of comes down to team dynamics. I had physically prepared for this trip for months and I think I was physically ready when I was there. I also had logistically planned, prepped everything. So from a physical standpoint and from, I guess, a logistical and preparation standpoint, I had done everything I needed to. But what I didn't account for was bad team dynamics. So essentially what happened is we had a team member that was willing to throw safety to the wind and do whatever it took to make it to the summit. But that included putting themselves and others around them in danger. And this wasn't a one-time instance either. So we had actually had a couple team meetings already about this, kind of voiced our opinions, and I thought things were gonna get better, but as the trip went on, things didn't seem to get much better. And so already before we made it to 17 camp, I was already kind of getting like mentally broken down. And this is something that I didn't realize as much until now or after the, I was on this trip, but this trip was just as much mental as it was physical. And if you're not with, I guess, supportive team members or with a positive team members, or just if you don't feel, if you're already down, you're already cold, it's negative 25, and you have a team member that's like, come on, let's do this, and they're doing things smart, they're doing things right, that's gonna motivate you to, to really just get out of that little hole you're in and keep moving on. But when you have a team member that's doing the exact opposite, um, making the trip unfun, making it unsafe, you, you don't realize how much that can impact you mentally when you're already in a, a cold, desolate place. So I guess overall, when we got to 17 camp, we um, ended up getting there really late at night. None of us got good sleep. It was really cold. So the next morning we missed our summit window for that day, which then also meant we were going to miss our flights home and have to reschedule everything. So for at least two of our partners, they stayed and didn't care at all. They were, again, like I said, willing to do pretty much anything to make it to the summit. Whereas though I already was unhappy and not having the greatest experience. And so when I saw my, I guess my opportunity to kind of get out of this situation, I took it. And that was pretty much leaving and going to catch my flight home and using kind of the excuse of not feeling the greatest. Now I didn't feel the greatest, um, but that was both physical and mental. So overall, I just want to say I do plan to definitely go back. Um, I kind of feel like I let certain people on this trip and I guess my brain and the mental aspect beat me. And so I would like to go back and go with most likely just one other partner. I didn't like having four. There's just more people you have to deal with, more more things. Whereas though once I left and split off and it was just two of us, the team dynamics got a hundred times better and it was so much easier to work with just one person making decisions and whatnot. So overall, I do definitely plan to go back and I do plan to go back sooner than later. I do think I made the right decision in leaving. I think that for me, if I continued to go up and ended up getting more sick or didn't feel well, I didn't have full faith in some of my partners. And because of that, I, I basically decided to, to bail. And uh, yeah, some people might call me crazy for doing that. But for me, I got off the mountain safely. I uh, have plenty of years ahead of me, hopefully, and I plan to go back. And I plan to go back with a partner that I can have a good time with because it's not all about just making it to the top. I think a, a, a very big aspect of it is just to have fun. And if you're not having fun, what's the point? So do I think I could have made it to the top this last time around? Yes, I could have probably stayed a day or two longer, acclimatized a little bit better and then gone for a summit. But at this point, my trip was kind of just over. And like I said, from a mental standpoint, I was just done. So that's something to think about for um, anyone planning to climb Denali or any big mountain, to be honest. Mental aspect is just as important as the physical aspect. And if you let your brain win, doesn't matter how strong you are, you're not gonna make it to the top. So just something to keep in mind. So yeah, back to the edit. All right, we've been 17 camp. Say goodbye to Denali. Good boy. But check out these views. So this is the ridge line we walked. There's actually people on it right there. 
look at these views. You don't have to make it to the top to appreciate it here. Well, this trip is coming to a close. I'll be off the mountain in the next two days, hopefully. But we will never forget this view. Look at that view. That's Forker, standing at about 17,000 feet. And right back there is Hunter. And that's the horrible, horrible wall of death. All right, Oop. catch you guys tomorrow. Peace. Morning, day, let's, let's call it 12. It might be 13 though. Um, actually, actually, I think it is 13. So Chris and I made it back to 14 last night. Just made some breakfast, bagels, bacon. And now we have to pack all of this up into our sleds and start heading down. It's still going to be a slow process, but I'm actually hoping to get all the way to base camp either tonight or early tomorrow and then get a flight out tomorrow so we can actually get on our original flights and leave Anchorage on Sunday. So that is my hope and uh, keep you guys posted. All right, it's official. We're leaving 14 camp. Got my sled again. These are the final goodbyes. Goodbye 14 camp. Goodbye everyone. Chris and I met a bunch of cool people up here in the last couple days, so we actually gave away a bunch of food, which was nice too, so and that's Chris back there. All right, check in later. All right, we're halfway between 14 camp now and 11 camp. We, I think we figured out how to do the sleds. So there's mine. And then Chris is in between, so he can kind of pull back and uh, for anyone who knows, mine has a Pressex on it, so it won't come riding up on me. So, I think it's working out. We made it back to 11 camp now. Get my snowboard back, and look we've moved into our spot. Let me see if you can see that a little bit better. That was our old spot. That's who moved in. I got a sticker, I'll stick on something later. Seems cool, so now we are going to snowboard down to 7-8 camp and then hopefully all the way out to base camp today. I can't believe this is work I can't believe this is working. I'm snowboarding and I'm pulling the sled. Woohoo! And just like that dropped another thousand feet. The sled's still there? Check out this. We're gonna get out of here tonight. I'm going home. This is amazing. We left uh, 1100 camp at like, what about 8.15 or so. It's now 8.40 and I don't know if you can quite see it, but right down here at the bottom of this hill, that is 11A camp. So we went from 14 camp to 11A camp. And about as of right now, we left at like 3 o'clock, so it's almost 9 o'clock. So like 7 hours, 6 hours? No. 6 hours. Um, we have descended what took us over a week just to climb up to, so pretty cool. All right, so we are now down at 78 camp. Just came from up there, and I just switched over my snowboard back to a split board. For the last five miles out, because it's pretty flat, and, uh, and we are back at base camp, so it is 10.06. This place is amazing right now. It's like 11.30. Still clearing up.
enough for me to see that the sun isn't roasting me. It's incredible. And check out this view. I know I keep showing you, but are you kidding me? And we got Denali way back there. But to be honest, this has been one of my favorite days so far. Not just because I got to snowboard and some of the downhill, but this, this uh, like Alaskan range in the middle of the night, or let me see, sorry. Oh, it's only 12.06, so this Alaskan range is pretty amazing. There's literally no, no sound at all. If you stop, you hear nothing at all. Until when, just a little bit ago, I heard um, a Serac fall. And that's what I was talking about. We're just cruising and I even had music in and you can still hear something like that. It just, I don't know if you can hear it on this camera, but it sounds like loud thunder and just another giant rock fall or serac fall. Pretty cool. The light keeps changing over here too. It's still not dark out. All right, it is now 2 a.m. This took longer than I expected, but we just arrived at base camp. So that was an 11 hour day. But I am pretty much officially done, other than getting a flight off here. Whew. That was not easy. All right, we officially are at base camp for the next like four hours. That's, that's the runway, like, right there. Chris is much stronger than I, and he's already set up his, his mattress, but I don't have the energy, so... Just laying on this, so... Hopefully I get out of this place in, like, three hours and take a warm shower. And eat food without wearing my gloves. And those boots, these boots treated me quite nicely. But I don't plan to wear a pair of boots for the next, like, year. All right, I'll catch you guys in the morning. Peace. nine of us waiting to fly out, but it looks like we're all going to be able to get out in the next couple flights. We're waiting for Lisa to tell us when we can fly. It's down there. Loaded. We're finally leaving. I can finally take this nose guard off.
I'm officially back in Telkeet now. 